After spending a week road tripping from Texas, we have made it to northern Utah, an area surrounded by snowy mountains and filled with endless outdoor activities. And for the next three days, we're going to try to experience as much of this beautiful region as we can, like floating in a crater, which reminds me so much of the cenotes in Mexico, soaking in steamy hot springs, and huffing and puffing our way up to some gorgeous views. Oh my God, this is really tough. It's kicking my butt. We are getting a very early start this morning to hike to the Fifth Water Hot Springs, also known as the Diamond Fork Hot Springs. It's normally around a four and a half mile round trip hike, but the road to the trailhead is closed for the season, so it's going to be closer to eight miles. And since it can be a very busy spot, our goal is to get there for sunrise to hopefully have some solitude. We can smell the rotten, eggy, sulfur, hot spring smell from the parking lot. It kind of went away, but now it's really getting strong, so I think we're getting pretty close. This is definitely one of the most beautiful hot springs that we have ever been to. It's just tucked into this forested canyon. It's cascading down the river. You know, the steam rising up. Oh, this is a magical spot. And the best part, no one else is here right now. It was totally worth getting up at 4 a.m. And now for the hard part getting into our bathing suits. It is 20 something degrees out here, like 22, 23 degrees. It is freaking cold. <laughs> I kind of feel the same nerves that I felt in Finland when we went ice swimming, but unlike that experience where we got into freezing water, this will feel really, really good once we get in it. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's so cold. <laughs> Hope this isn't too hot. Oh, that feels so good. Oh. Oh, oh, that's hot. Woo oh, it feels so good, but it's so hot. That might be too hot. Woo! Woo! Ah, 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 ah. Oh, man. It's like, oh, that feeling when you're, you're so cold and the water's so high that everything is burning. Oh, oh it you feels really good. I don't know. I don't know. I think it's good. I already know getting out is going to be absolutely brutal. There's all these different pools and I think they're different temperatures. It's having people hop between them. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get out of this one. I'm just gonna stay in here because I don't want to get cold again. Ooh. Oh, it's so nice. Oh, oh once you're in. Oh. I love this. Oh, this is amazing. <laughs> oh, it's like euphoric. Oh. <laughs> Your body is so red. I'm like a lobster. <laughs> so my strategy was to get really good and hot in there, almost sweating, so that once you come out, it doesn't feel too bad. But we're gonna dry off and try to change behind this rock. There's not very many, there's actually nowhere to change unless you find a rock like this. And uh, nudity is allowed here. And there was a guy that went up there, and so he's the only one that's out here. So if he comes back down, he might get a little show. <laughs> I thank you. <laughs> Oh God, you can't see anything? I can't see anything. Oh Trust me, I'm not gonna let everyone see the goodies. That's only for me. All right, we're decent now. <laughs>
And now for the less glamorous side of hot springs, trash. Unfortunately, people seem to think that hot springs and nature in general is just one giant trash can. We found piles of clothes, we found water bottles, trail mix, candy wrappers all on the ground. So we brought two trash bags with us to help clean it up. So please, 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 if you come out here, do not leave trash, do not leave clothes, take everything out with you. And if you can, bring some trash bags and help pick some stuff up. That's our PSA for the day. We're currently driving through Provo Canyon and it is so amazing out here. Giant snow-capped mountains, a river running through, there was a waterfall cascading down. Man, this is my favorite scenery for sure. We spent the morning soaking in steamy hot springs, but our water activities are not quite over yet. We're now off to go swim in a crater. currently standing on the Utah Crater, also known as the Homestead Crater in Midway, Utah. This is a beehive-shaped limestone formation that formed when melting snow water from the nearby mountains seeped deep into the earth, and just below us is a 10,000-year-old geothermal hot spring. This unique attraction became a hot springs resort in the late 1800s, and today you can still soak in its thermal waters. It costs $15 per person for a scheduled 40-minute time slot, which you can book in advance, so we're gonna head down and go take a dip. Oh wow, <laughs> super cool. <laughs> I was gonna compare it to a, like a nice warm bath. <laughs> it's like <laughs> bath water. <laughs> The crater is 65 feet deep and the water is an average of 95 degrees and besides swimming here you can also snorkel and scuba dive and apparently it's the only warm water scuba diving destination in the entire U.S. This reminds me so much of the cenotes in Mexico because it has this bright blue color and you're in a cave. That was a very fun experience. It was definitely different than our hot spring this morning, which was out in remote nature and there was no one else around. But even though there was a group of people, I still felt like there was a good amount of space to spread out. I never felt like I was running into anyone unless I just accidentally floated into someone. <laughs> yeah, I think it was a perfect amount of people. Any more you'd be bumping into people, but the overall experience was just a lot of fun and you just kind of hang out and float around. <laughs> yeah, you're just chilling. It's yeah. very, very relaxing. Tonight, we've got an extra special camping spot lined up. We're staying at our first Walmart of the year. This Walmart actually has a pretty amazing mountain view, so it's not half bad. Normally, we would cook dinner while staying at a Walmart, but when looking on Google Maps, I discovered a restaurant called Little India Fine Dining, which is located in the same parking lot and has almost 1,200 reviews and five stars. So tonight, we're gonna treat ourselves to a little date night. barely see you behind our beautiful bouquet of fake roses that we just got at Walmart. <laughs> but this is easily the most romantic 
dinner we've ever had in this van and it's in a Walmart parking lot so I just feel like we have achieved peak van life. <laughs> I got chicken tikka masala which is one of my favorite Indian dishes and Catherine got butter chicken which is one of her favorites and man I have been looking forward to this. We both have been looking forward to this all day long. We just keep saying to each other oh I can't wait for Indian food tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so full. Yes. Mm. Oh Worthy of five stars. Worthy of five stars. That's what I was gonna say. Five stars. Mm. Mm. This morning we made the short drive up to Park City, which is basically the picture perfect mountain town. It started out as a silver mining town in the late 1800s with the Silver King Mine being one of the most famous silver mines in the world. But today it's known for being a year round paradise with tons of winter sports, amazing hiking in the summer, mountain biking, an annual film festival, and so much more. We have wanted to visit here for years, but unfortunately we're kind of here during the shoulder season, so a lot of what we would want to do isn't accessible, but we're still gonna try to explore a bit. Brunch, we came to a spot called Salt Box, which actually came highly recommended to us by a viewer, so thank you. This place is really neat. It's part cafe where you can get coffee, breakfast, or lunch, and they also have this grab and go section where you can get different food items to take to go with you out on the slopes or on a hike. And I started out with a rose cardamom latte, which is delicious, and it actually has like rose petals on it. I feel like I have roses all in my teeth now. And then I got their steak tacos. And I got the biscuits and gravy, which is something I don't normally get. It, but this thing, look at this thing, it is huge. That's like a biscuit loaf. And it has their house made sausage gravy on there and then you can get two eggs on top any way you want. I got them over easy. Oh man, let's dig into this thing. Mm. All right, I gotta start with this biscuit. Man, look at it, it is so fluffy and pillowy and dense. And then this gravy. Man, it's like a, it seems like a different gravy than you would normally get on biscuits and gravy. Usually it's more, you know, kind of tan or white, but this one is more orange looking. And I'm not sure what's in it, but it is so hearty and savory. There's all kinds of little chunks of sausage in there. I really like how they plated it also. They put the biscuit, it, it, was, it was probably like this, but then they cut it into thirds so that when they laid all the gravy over the top, it like all seeps into the crack so that it really gets into the, into the biscuit. They're using their noggin when they plan this dish. They definitely don't play around with the portions here. This is so much food. I have three loaded tacos, a side of beans, and then chips and salsa. Now those are solid steak tacos. That steak is perfection. It has a delicious grilled flavor, and then I just love this salsa that it came with. It is so fresh tasting. Skiing is huge here in Park City. There are two major ski resorts in town and 7,300 acres of skiable terrain. And if you look on the map, you just see tons of lines for ski runs and lifts. In fact, there's even a ski lift right in town. I'm actually going to be skiing, or I guess the better way to put it is, I'm going to attempt to ski at Deer Valley as part of a travel conference I'm attending this week. So our original plan for today was to try cross country skiing instead, which people are doing right behind me. But we're here on the last couple days of the season and a lot of the easier trails are closing. so. It just didn't feel like a smart idea to try a brand new sport in less than ideal conditions. So instead, we're gonna go learn about people who actually know how to ski. Park City was home to the 2002 Winter Olympics and Utah Olympic Park was built for the Olympics, but today it is a training complex and activity center. Here you can find a massive ski jump, go bobsledding, and visit a couple free museums.
We're first checking out the 2002 Olympics Museum and they have so many neat Olympics artifacts in here. You can see the puppets that they carried during the opening ceremonies. You can see outfits that the different medalists wore. You can actually see some of the medals and they have all these different panels just kind of explaining each event during the Olympics. This panel is about the luge event and it says they go down the track 75 to 80 miles per hour and they wear these gloves that have little spikes in the fingertips so they kind of push themselves as they go. Can you imagine going down just an icy track, no protection, faster than you go on most highways? No. No, thank you. <laughs> they let you touch a curling stone and you can try to pick it up. It says it's 44 pounds. All right. <laughs> cool. I didn't realize those were so heavy. We've never paid much attention to the Olympics over the years, but after visiting so many of the host cities all around the world and reading about some of the inspiring stories and athletes that happened at these games, we're gonna have to pay a bit more attention to the next one. And apparently they're trying to be the host city of the 2034 Olympics, so we'll just have to come back and watch it in person. USA, USA. So the second museum is all about skiing. One of my favorite things in here is seeing the evolution of skis and snowboards and the different outfits people wore. The outfits from back in the day were so colorful and fun, but besides the exhibits, they also have some really fun interactive elements. They have this green screen where you can stand and then get a photo taken. And they have simulators. They have a mountain biking, a downhill skiing, a bobsledding, and then this like parachute skiing simulator. And for a specific amount of money, depending on how many you want to do, you can experience them for yourself. So obviously we're gonna do it. And I think we've decided to do bobsledding and then the parachute skiing because those are the two that we probably will never experience in real life. First up, we're going speed flying, which is basically skiing with a parachute on. <laughs> Here we go. Oh my gosh, this would be so scary we're in real life. Right oh, oh my gosh, gosh. we're gonna hit this mountain. Oh my god. Oh! <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't believe people actually do this. <laughs> this is very fun. Oh. Crash landing. <laughs> that was wild. <laughs> All right, next up, we're going bobsledding. Whee! Oh my god. Whoa! <laughs> Woo! Oh, cool. They also have a ski jump simulator that's free if you pay for one of the other simulators. And as we were driving up, I saw that big ski jump. I thought to myself, what would it be like to do that? I just want the feeling. I don't want to actually do it, I just want the feeling. Well, I'm going to get a little taste of it right here. <laughs> I guess ski jumping is not for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see if I'm any better. Probably not. I just got to beat 120. Here we go. Here we go. Did I go forward again? Oh! <laughs> forward. Back. Forward. Oh! Oh, it's a stuck one. I stuck the landing! Want me to land? Oh no! Oh my gosh! Ouch! I went oh, down on my face. I 122. 122. You got me about two points? I think I beat Adam by two points. <laughs> that is honestly the most fun I've had at a museum in a very long time. We are staying at Flight Park. <laughs> I might fly away. 
Tonight we are staying at Flight Park State Recreation Area, which is this huge plateau that is very popular with paragliders. And if you can't tell, it is mega windy up here. We actually camped here a few years ago and back then it was free, but it's now $15 per night to camp, which isn't a bad deal considering there really aren't any free options in this area this time of year. And you have these sweeping views. You have mountains off in the distance and an amazing view of Utah Lake. We don't see any paragliders right now, although it seems like it'd be really good conditions for it, but we'll be here for a few nights, so maybe we'll see some at some point. For our final adventure here in northern Utah, we're hiking up Grander Peak. Our plan was to hike the East Trail, but when we got there this morning, it said that the trail is closed today due to invasive weed spraying. So we're now going to hike up the West Face Trail, which is shorter, but it's quite a bit steeper. And it was already going to be a steep hike, so it's gonna be a tough one, but the views from the top should be totally worth it. We've hiked some hard trails. Now this one is next level, like the next level above next level, two levels above our normal hard. It is so steep, like I'm gonna guess like 45 degrees, no relief. Oh man, there's like no flat spots, you know? Man, it's kicking my butt. I'm having to stop every few minutes just to catch my breath. We're above a mile in elevation, so that already makes it hard to breathe. Oh. oh man, this is really tough. We are getting so close. I think we have about 0.2 miles left. We're going up there. And I don't think I've ever hiked so slow in my life. Can you believe it? We did it. Oh my gosh. That was a doozy. Oh, I'm so proud of us. That was the hardest hike we've done in a very, very long time. Whew. I gotta say, Kona absolutely crushed this hike. She was not tired at all, and she got to eat some snow. She loved it. The views from up here are even better than I dreamed of or hoped of. You have amazing views the entire way up, but it's the mountains all the way across on the other side of Salt Lake City, and then you have urban views of Salt Lake City, which is really cool, and all the surrounding towns. But once you get up here onto the peak, and you have this majestic view right here. Man, it is, it's making me giddy right now. It's so beautiful with all the snow covering and you can see all the trees poking through. And it's just so many peaks, just as far as you can see, well worth the hard work to get up here. Views like this are even sweeter when you put in so much work and effort to get to them. <laughs> This was an amazing start to our time here in Utah. I lost count how many times I said to myself over the last few days, I love it here, it's so beautiful. But our time here in Utah is not over quite yet. Next up, we're gonna head to the southern part of the state, which we spent quite a bit of time in a few years ago. But this time we're gonna check out some new spots and some more off the beaten path areas. But uh, wish us luck getting down this mountain because it's gonna be real steep and real slick. <laughs> look, at my, look at my face because of the water droplets on the GoPro. <laughs>